What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. We're going to be talking about my favorite things from 2021. Kind of a gift idea list. But we talked about a lot of things this year, and I definitely have my favorites, and I want to talk about them again. There are links for almost everything I'm going to be talking about in the description. So if you want longer form of any of the things uh, that we'll be talking about today, I definitely have done videos on them, including live streams. So enjoy the memes. I've, I've unlocked, unearthed, uncovered new ham radio memes. So they're in the, uh, the opening here, as always. Enjoy the memes. That's one of the good ones right there. That's a whoo. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> And as always, if you want to see the hottest ham <laughs> radio memes, uh, Discord link is in the chat. Join us on Discord, and there's a ham memes chat, and they're pretty, pretty awesome. Let's get started. How's it going, everybody? Let me click over here. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Appreciate you coming out, taking your time. You could be doing a lot of things with your Saturday, but here you are. I got a question earlier. When is my Christmas stream going to be? People probably know I have a bit of a, a thing that I've been doing for a couple of years now where I build some kind of antenna contraption out of Christmas lights. Well, this year, Saturday is Christmas, so I guess I'm streaming on a Saturday. Unless something serious happens, I will be live my normal time on Christmas Day. So that should be fun. That will be a real Christmas spirit type of uh, event. So, yeah, thanks, everybody, for, for asking me about that because I'm definitely trying something ambitious, something more ambitious than I've ever done. So appreciate that, the mention there. Okay, big reminder, we'll, we will be doing the after chat on Discord, as we always do, but it's worth reminding or letting people know who are out here for the first time. We got a Discord, it's in the description. It's the Ham Radio Crash Course community. Basically, any questions you have, it's a 24-7 Ham Radio chat room. So pretty much whatever you're into, you'll find it. Anyway, appreciate it. And if you could, as you're watching, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here. All right, let's go ahead and flip some things over. Talk about some stuff coming up. Uh, this is just a reminder. I like to mention this up front. This is our merch store for the Ham Radio Crash Course. My wife runs this store, and she has a special thing going on for this month, kind of a Christmas deal, and also based on our podcast, the Ham Radio Crash Course. We worked with a local coffee roaster, and we have Give It The Beans, which is kind of an inside joke uh, over on the HRCC. We are working with a local coffee roaster. They work with a farm that they've had a close working relationship with for years. And we are selling some one, these are one pound bags, right? 12 ounce, 12 ounce bags of coffee. So check it out if you like. It's in the description for the Hammer to Crash Course Ham Tactical Merch Store. All right, next, a bit of news. ICOM did this cool little post. They're working on something called the Super High Frequency Band Challenge. Sounds like ICOM might be thinking about producing some kind of a transverter, uh, maybe antenna system, maybe something that would just click right into the side or connect to your 705. But it basically says that their, their technical research team is on a new project to create a product from scratch by utilizing wireless communication technology know-how. They are looking to build something to, uh, for 2.4 gigahertz and the 5.6 gigahertz bands. So pretty cool. And uh, you can see they got some of their test equipment there, or at least what they're prototyping right there in the image. So that's pretty awesome. Next, something cool that I got notified about right before going alive, and it was from um, ooh, Covain. Is it Covain? I think it might have been Covain who told me. If you're in the chat, let me know. But there was a uh, radio event or an Indian radio conference, ham fest, something like that, and Ashar Farhan was there. That's not him, by the way. That's just the person that's on the thumbnail for the video. But uh, he did a talk about what he's producing or, or making a prototype co called the s -Bidex. So if you're not familiar, um, Ashar creates the micro -Bidex, and this is the s -Bidex. So it is leveraging basically the functionality of a Raspberry Pi connected to 
a, again, it's a prototype, so we don't know what the final will look like, but he's working on bringing Raspberry Pi functionality to amateur radio, at least one that he designs in the kit form. And I believe, yeah. So if you're not familiar, this is the, the micro bit X in the current case that it's provided. So if you've built one of these, you know that it's using an Arduino-based kind of processing body. In this case, this would be working off a of Raspberry Pi. So that's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited to hear more about what he's doing on that front. And there is, if I've got this correct, where is it? No, that's not it. That's not it. We'll go back to that in a second. Yeah, right here. So there it is on the table. You can see it. That gray box is the radio. So that's pretty cool. Um, interesting to see how that all works out because that's basically built from the ground up to an interface. The link, I'll put the link in the description so you can check this out because it does talk about the block diagram and the hardware that goes into it. Right here. Our power. Mm -hmm. I'm in the works, right? But it's. A there we go. So it's kind of hard to see, but you can see he's got a waterfall or some kind of spectrum display, and then on the the left hand side of that screen. I can't hear you over the YouTube audio quality. What? It, is my audio bad? What's going on? Sounds like there may be an audio problem. Oh, on the video. Sorry about that. I apologize. Okay. So anyway, paused. I paused the video <laughs> so you can see the display there. The left-hand side is the controls for the radio, and the right-hand side would be where the spectrum display is at. Uh, let's mute that. I thought I did have that muted, so I apologize. Let's go back to there. You can see it's it's kind of boxy, right? So it's kind of blocky. So we'll we'll end up we'll we'll get a better idea of where they're at once they get past the prototype phases. Uh, anyway, tis the season. Want to give a shout out to uh, Ham Radio 2.0. You know, it's good to have friends, and it's definitely good to have ham radio friends who are also beer drinkers. I got a little care package in the mail from Jason. He sent some beers. So I've got Snooze Control. This is a coffee stout. And I've got another one here that I'll probably open. Different type, so when I do open that, I'll, I'll mention it. But cheers to Jason. Uh, you probably... Wow, this is dark. Holy smokes, can you see how black, the black blood of this is dark and thick. Holy smokes. Anyway, uh, you probably, well, actually, I don't know if you know this or not. But on my podcast that I do with my wife, we, you know, we'll have a drink or whatever during the show. Uh, oftentimes it's beer, and I got some ghost pepper IPA, hazy IPA milkshake beers. And I've got three of them left over, and I'm going to send some over to uh, Jason there. there. So, Because if you followed his videos, he'll often drink um, sometimes not the greatest beer on purpose, though. Uh, one of them was a pickle juice beer, which I still argue I would probably really enjoy. But uh, I'm going to send him the ghost pepper so he can check them out. All right. What else? What else? I think I got it all. Did I get it? I got it. All right. So what are we talking about? Well, it's been it's been a long year. Feels like it's been a longer year than than most years on record. And um, I looked at a lot of stuff. Not some stuff not so great. Other stuff, pretty awesome. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. The pretty awesome stuff. And as a reminder for everybody watching, the links in the, are in the description. So if you want to watch the longer form videos or jump through them a little bit. When I'm talking about the individual pieces of gear that I'm going to be covering, uh, you know, they're there. So you can go check that out. And yeah, Jody mentions BE5 SAR that Ham Radio 2.0 is in his final push to 100K. Yeah, he's really close to uh, 100,000 subscribers. So I'm guessing he's probably going to get there by Christmas. So that's a pretty cool Christmas gift. And once he gets there, I believe, I believe he's giving away a, what's he giving away? Uh, he's... An SDR, no, what's he giving away? Somebody will tell me in the chat, but he's giving away an amazing radio. I think it's a 6400, but why can't I remember the radio? Where's, uh, 
N5 SKT will tell me what he's giving away. Don will tell me what he's giving away because it's his favorite radio. Um, boop, 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 boop. Flex. Thank you. Rolla, beat him, beat him to it. Rolla, beat everybody. Okay, well, thank you, chat. That's another reason why you're here. I appreciate the comments, by the way. And as we're going through some of the slides I put together, if you have any comments, questions, or just want to call me out, Josh, why would you pick that uh, that thing to talk about? Why is that gear your favorite? Feel free. It's it's quite all right. All right, so let's let's get into this. All right, my favorite gear of 2021. Whoop, that's not it. That was some of it though that you just saw. So first and foremost, thanks for watching. It's it's been a crazy year, as I as I said. Uh, I do this video kind of once a year just to kind of start to catch up on the end of the year, kind of put a button on it, and then we'll do another one for New Year's on kind of my favorite moments from the last year. But in 2021, I tried to continue to be as objective as I can with some of these products and show you, if not for me, who are they for? A lot of times there's a a decent amount of ham radio gear out there that kind of has a, a more narrow focus. And for those people that that narrow focused beam is shining upon, it's really good for them, but it's not good for everybody. And I, I really tried to, 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 to convey that in my videos. So if that was at all helpful, um, you know, then I would appreciate it. And I don't know why my, oh, that's why. Never mind. I thought my phone was on, not on silent. But anyway, thank you for spending the time to watch the videos as we go through this. And uh, make sure, yeah, tell me about your favorite things as we go through. That came out this year. That's always the goal of this. So the, the following items are in no particular order. And there will be some at the end that I call my kind of tops. And then we've got something I've got to mention that I'll be using in the future here that I didn't get to talk about, but definitely deserves a mention. All right, so Pac-10 and Mini. This is... It's been tough to get Pactenas, right? I think everybody knows that Pactenas is a harder um, antenna to pick up. George was, we've exchanged some emails, George from Ham Radio Workbench podcast. He makes these, and he actually told me that these are uh, the level of production he's at now. He has a group in a you know clean room, basically, that builds all this stuff. So it's, it's super cool when he was walking through and describing the process. But I was quite surprised by this antenna. I know I shouldn't have been. Mike loves the antenna, Mike K8MRD, and he has referenced it many times and recommends it. And I'm really glad I got it. It was a absolute great performer on 20 meters. And I'm actually in the process of uh, in in beginning the length of wire with and then adding a strain relief connector on a banana plug to do 40 meters, which will pretty much cover me for what I like to do you know, POTA, and then also if I'm if I'm staying somewhere, having that 40 meters. I always really like to have 40 meters at night. But anyway, the Pactena Mini is about $90, and you do need to follow the website. I don't know if he has a notify option. In fact, I am on the website right now. I don't see it. Maybe I'll I'll text him after the the show. Email George and let him know. Hey, you gotta you gotta add a notify me so that people will will know when you're when you're back in stock they'll go out and buy it cuz it is a good antenna it's it's worth the investment a couple of things that jump out there's mount points all over it there's a little circle at the top of the feed point where the transformer is you can use that to hang that part up raise that up in the air and have a sloper config or in my case the images you're seeing here i just ran out the wire the end of the wire connects to a antenna mast it's great, really good. I paired mine with a Soda Beams Tactical Mini Mast. So if you're familiar with that mast or the dimensions of that mast, anything that is roughly that size will do just as well. But you can use almost anything with it. It's it's pretty modular and pretty easy to get up on the air. So points on that. And there's a video on that as well. Oh, I should mention, um, I, I'm trying something new. Uh, I, I get called out occasionally on, you know, uh, you just get all this stuff sent to you for free and you get kickbacks and all this stuff. And sure, I get things sent to me that are demos uh, occasionally. But every one of these slides, I'm going to mention whether this was given to me or I bought it. So if there's any curiosity, if, it, if I'm, you know, chilling for a brand or whatever, you can take the opinion from what I have to say about it and uh, also whether I paid for it. In this case, I paid for it. All right. Kiwi SDR TDOA. This is not a piece of gear per se in the traditional sense, but it's definitely a website that has a really interesting use case. You know, we've talked about web SDRs. A lot of you use web SDR. 
for those of you that aren't licensed and getting interested in radio or curious about radio, Web SDRs and Kiwi SDR, for instance, are a great way to get out there and experience it and play around a bit. A lot of people use Web SDRs and Kiwi SDR to listen when they are receiving frequencies around the world. They'll listen to the same frequency that they're transmitting on. They'll try and hear themselves, make sure they're getting out there. They're really useful. But when the whole Cuban um, interference thing came out, I used this software, and again, it's just an online tool, to do time difference on arrival, which is a form of radio direction finding. I use that to kind of code, not triangulate's the wrong word, but locate where that interference was coming from. I had a lot of fun doing it. It's an actually practical tool. It is used by the military. Many militaries use it, not just the US military. And it's something you should consider, and it's free to use and a lot of fun. So. Definitely add that to the list of things that you may want to play around with. I know uh, for a fact them radio out. waves is harmful. Frank Wilson. Hey, thank you for the super chat. Really do appreciate it. Says, my favorite thing of 2021, the Dymo Label Writer 450. Made it so much easier to send out QSL cards. Thanks for the idea, Josh. Hey, I appreciate that. So I will say I got some flack on that on QRZ. Uh, God, people got really mad about that video. And they said, those those labels, they, they just disappear after enough time. Um, so consider you may want to use the labels for uh, the, the shipping address, and you may still want to handwrite the actual exchange. But I printed out a label. It's been sitting there since, um, when did I put that up? July 15th. No fading. I wrote on it so that I would remember the date. And it's actually in the background of all of my videos. So you can we can actually watch it together and I'll do a, a follow on video in like a year or so on how we're doing with that. Anyway, West Mountain Radio Power Gate. This power gate is on the right hand side of the slide and you can see the inputs, right? It's got a solar panel input. It's got a battery. It's got an out and it's got a power supply. So solar panel, battery, power supply. It will basically interface between all those things and out the power through the out. And then you can connect that into a power pole breakout bar or something along those lines. And so if any one of those things goes away on you, so in instant, you know, for instance, that power supply line, if you have that connected, that light will turn green. And if for any reason that power supply goes out, it will switch over to using the battery bank and, and or recharging that with solar. It's a really, really cool tool to have in something like a go box, like my go box right there. Plus, they're not that big. Um, and so it'll do a lot of what you want to do. It's not cheap, though. So I think it's great. It makes things really, really simple. Um, but at $190, it's something that you may have to budget for. There's a question in the chat. Does it have a charge controller? Yes, it is a charge controller as well. So it'll, it'll appropriately charge the battery off of solar panel or off of the power supply. And then once the battery is all charged up, if you were to lose connection or power to the traditional power supply, it switches over to battery and charges off the solar. So pretty straightforward. I really liked it just because it was really simple to use. And it works really well. Th things that, um, you know, those things where you don't really have to like spend a lot of time programming or doing settings on and all that stuff, and it just works. I like that kind of stuff. And this is one of those things. And I bought it. <laughs> okay, so the Rig Expert Stick Pro. Uh, did a video on this one as well. And also, it's been in a lot of other videos, it's been on some of my live streams, a lot of other stuff. Going back to the Power Gate Loctite Ass is at RF Quiet. So far, I have identified no noise coming off of it. It seems to be quiet from my use that I've had, and I've used it in extremely low noise situations where there's literally nothing around me for over a mile and have had no problems. So uh, from my point of view, from what I've experienced, it's low noise. All right, but the Rig Expert Stick Pro. I believe this is a superior upgrade to a Nano VNA when working in the field. The Rig Expert Stick Pro is a really good field uh, antenna analyzer. It does basically all the things. Actually, I believe it does all the things to a point of the Nano VNA, except the Nano VNA has um, split input, so it'll do through testing. The Rig Expert Stick can do some through testing, but it's, it's tricky to do, um, and it's not what it's traditionally designed for. The reasons I like it, though, interfaces over Bluetooth and works with Android and iOS. 
I've found having both tested the original stick and the stick expert or stick pro that the pro I didn't have um, any Bluetooth issues when using it again on Android and iOS and I tested them both it's a fantastic little unit also not inexpensive at $389 I know for a fact them radio waves is harmful and this was given to me as a demo unit but I feel objectively comparing it to my other analyzers and my nano VNA that it's worth taking a look at off grid pit pete thank you for the super chat i follow you on instagram thanks for watching stick pro is a fantastic tool thanks for all the great videos thank you off grid pete by the way uh go follow off grid pete on instagram he's got a cool looking shack and he posts pictures of it he's working on some laura stuff right now it's pretty cool okay <laughs> the yesu ft5 dr two of the pictures on here are why I like it. Um, it's submersible now. You can totally submerse it in water, have it completely covered up. Um, it functions just like the FT3DR, its predecessor. The audio quality is a bit better. Some people prefer the case on the five. Some people for, prefer the case on the three. I happen to like them both, but I am more prone to like the background lit up buttons on the five and the form factor of the orange button i like it that's a personal thing uh purely so i will likely be selling off my ft3 here soon so keep an eye on the discord because we've got a swap channel and or the ham radio crash course facebook buy sell trade group which we have one of those too so if you're interested in that i'm going to be posting some stuff that i'm going to be liquidating here as i've gotten like the upgraded versions of them so i might as well get them sold off to a ham in the future or a ham that can use that stuff because it's still all good the ft3dr still a fantastic radio uh, it's worth mentioning though that uh this radio and the, the ft3 although it's no longer produced the ft5 is currently the one in production that's pretty much the only ht out that's doing full featured aprs meaning the capabilities that you can do with aprs all in the box without having to bluetooth in a tablet or having it limited somehow so the question in the chat from DK, what's your favorite antenna for the FT5DR? That would be the Signal Stuff Signal Stick. I have a link in the description. It's an affiliate link, so no price difference to you. But if you buy it, I will get a little piece of the action there in the order of a percent or two. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. But that that antenna I have tested, and I did a apples to apples, a A to A test, where um, it basically, I set something up to test out a bunch of other antennas, and I found the Signal Stuff Signal Stick worked equally bell, uh, be as good on both VHF and UHF. So, yeah, go check that out. All right, and I bought that one. This is 100% bought by me. I bought every Yesu FT. Uh, I didn't buy a one, but the two, the three, and the five. And I've liked them all, but the five so far is my favorite for sure. And that lower right-hand picture is not the screen boiling the water. I poured beer on it on a live stream. So nobody freak out. All right. Uh, swap my rigs. This is probably the most surprising thing that I experienced in 2021. And this happened at the Huntsville Ham Fest. Sorry for the light kind of... Uh, I, I, I didn't make this uh, display. It looks good in person, but when you take a picture of it, it's too much glare. So during my uh, Huntsville trip, one of the booths that I kind of passed by, and it wasn't until Ray Novak actually came up to me and goes, hey, did you check out those Swap My Rigs uh, people? And I'm like, no, why? He's like, just, he didn't tell me anything. That's, Ray will do that, and I, I like when he does that. He doesn't give you, doesn't want to flavor, you know, your opinion on stuff or whatever. He's like, go over there and talk to him. Um, do you go check it out? Let me know what you think. So the Swap My Rig people, and again, it's in the video. In fact, I made a standalone video for this. What this does is it allows you to remote the head unit of a radio, like most mobile radios or an ICOM 7100, up to 100 feet away with a VGA cable, okay? And that means it will cut down on RFI. You could put the body of the radio very very close to the exterior of where the coax enters your home so you won't necessarily have to have the you know the coax running around when there's rfi because you're remoting the head unit away and 
that gives you all kinds of cool things you can do with a 7100 head unit, for instance, like route the VGA cable into your office, have the whole thing set up there, and just be able to, to play radio while the body of the radio is all the way over um, by the entrance of the coax into your home, which is pretty smart. So I thought the whole thing was, was super cool. It's a fairly niche product. I think it's going to be great for people that uh, have like mobile setups for cars where they might swap out radios occasionally or they like to swap radios or like the 7100 I think is a really cool option with this. And in fact, that's the that's the radio that's on the table on that right hand picture. But the cool thing about it, and just so everybody understands, because I'm recapping this a bit because I'm not assuming you've watched the video, those little black boxes open up and there's a series of jump switches or um, jumpers. They're not called jump switches. They're called jumpers. The, the jumpers are movable into different pin settings, and you're basically shorting out different connections, not shorting, but completing different connections to different wires. And there is a instruction book and also online instructions that will allow you to swap out the, the pins on those black boxes for any major mobile radio that is on the market. Yeah, dip switch is another way to say it, but it's not really a switch, it's the physical jumper. But dip switches is fine too. Thank you, Laska Lives, Laska Alives. Uh, so you can just go get a Kenwood one day, swap it out for an ICOM, go get a Yaesu the other day, swap it. it. It's pretty simple and straightforward. And if you go watch that video, link is in the description that you can um, you can see an image of all the radios they cover. Incredibly smart idea. The, the, the owner is a very active ham. He's an inventor. I thought the whole thing was really cool, the whole story. His daughter was out there at the show helping him. And she was basically the pitch person for it. And I had a lot of fun talking with them. Anyway, the link is in the description. It's about $89. And if you think about what it costs to buy, you know, think if, think if you had two mobile radios and you bought the extension kits for those multiple, those those radios, this would basically, you you once you bought two of them, you would have paid for this and then you're good to go. You can just use this with whatever radios you use. JMO says, Josh, you should do a show on headsets and boom microphones. The choices are astounding. <laughs> Trying to make sense. JMO, I would if I had more um, experience. I, I try not to necessarily talk about stuff that I can't do now, learn about it, or learn with you on video. And I, I'd have to buy a bunch of boom mics and microphones. I will say this is a this is a PR40 Heil mic, which is what I've been using. So if you like this, this is kind of what it sounds like. All right, Buddy Stick Pro. Those are two different beach events uh, pictured there. Buddy Stick Pro, I I really like this antenna. I really, really like this antenna. It's easy to set up once you learn how to set it up, once you learn how to use a loaded vertical antenna, which I've, I've done a couple of videos on that, explaining its setup process. It deserves some time to get to know it, though, in, in how it functions. Maybe you get that rig expert stick and you use that. I, I really enjoy this antenna. I think at $260, which $260 is if you get the um, the tripod legs. You don't have to get the tripod legs. It The Versa T mount, which is the uh, thing on the right side of the open bag, it looks like a little triangle. You can just use your own tripod for this. You can tripod mount the bottom of it. You don't need the legs. I opted for the legs, and that way I can have a tripod for my camera when I'm out doing YouTube. But for a lot of you, who cares? You, you don't need tripod for camera stuff. But th this is a great antenna. I've, I've had a lot of fun using it. I really like the uh, elevated radial. It's about four feet above the ground. Um, and so far, every time I've taken it out, I've made contacts with it. I haven't had any issues. And I really, really enjoy it. So I paid for this too. Reviewed by me. I really enjoy it. It fits in a backpack well too. Uh, my my big problem with a lot of stuff that I take out in the field is I'll, I'll throw a backpack on. And the water bottle pocket will just get overloaded with mass and all kinds of stuff sticking out. Whereas this stuff all folds down into multiple pieces and you kind of look like a, you know, like a sniper from a movie, an assassin movie where he flips open the case and he starts putting things together. That's what it reminds me of. By the way, if anybody has any questions, just at Ham Radio Crash Course in the chat and I'll try and get to them as we go along. And uh, yeah, there's my, my oldest son, Ben, is uh, standing by the electric fence post where the where the radial is, and I'm hanging my bag off of it to keep it from blowing over, but yeah. All right, uh, next thing that I really liked this year was the Chameleon 
lefts, the lightweight N-fed sloper antenna. This I took up to Big Bear, California. This is actually at my dad's place, and you can see it, the little circle, is when it's up in the tree, hoisted up in the tree. This did phenomenally well, and I think some of you probably know by watching my videos, I really like resonant antennas and resonant portable antennas, and this is one of those antennas where you don't need a tuner or you don't need anything. You just get the body of the intent, sorry, where the transformer matches, you get that up into the air and you can slope it down. That's what the lightweight end fed sloper is meant to be. You hoist it up in the tree and then you slope the wire down. Do you have to do that? No, you don't. You can treat it like any other end fed, but that was kind of the design of it. Nobody in particular asks, what are your thoughts on the MPAS 2.0 vertical for DX cross-country comms? Hmm. Nobody in particular. I'm going to answer your question specifically because we're just having a fun. Uh, we're just having a fun show today, and I will take your questions, guys. So, all right. For me, DX usually imply, and you said DX. I'm going to approach that first. Uh, in usually imparts implies some kind of gain or some kind of a vertical antenna system with low takeoff and that kind of thing. The M pass is, is a fine question for portable operations, and the M pass you said light, right? M pass 2.0, 2.0. It has the wire feed point as well, so you can do like a wire that you go over a tree or whatever. You could definitely get across country depending on how much power you're putting out. If you're strictly QRP, that might be difficult. If you're like me in Southern California and trying to get all the way up to Maine, for instance, on QRP, probably not going to work, particularly on voice. You, At best, you'd be able to do it with digital, like JSA call or a digital mode that it works lower in the noise. The MPAS 2.0 is a fine antenna. You do need a tuner generally to run it. So if your radio doesn't have a tuner, you're likely going to need an external tuner or something along those lines to make it work. You're not going to have the best DX with it, depending on its setup, because you're you're probably too far away. You may not be able to get it. It, it, it depends on really where you're at at that point. Steven Arbergast, thoughts on GNU Radio. GNU Radio is something that I have to get into and, and, and play around with. I had flashed it on a Raspberry Pi, but I didn't spend much time with it. So I can't tell you my thoughts because I don't have any thoughts other than uh, if, if I understand what it is correctly and it is what it is, we need more people doing that. People need to get involved with that. The Chameleon Lefts a Lightweight End Fed Sloper is 180 bucks, and you can find it on their site. And they did send this to me. So I did review it after they did send me this demo unit. All right. <laughs> one, of, one of my more favorite videos that I, I got to, uh, to do this year, because I think my son is, is with me on this one. The Belka Mini Shortwave Receiver, the Belka DX. The good news is, is that there is an upgraded version of the Belka DX, and it is selling right now for two. God, get out of here fly selling for 222 euros it is a shortwave radio it doesn't do am broadcast it doesn't do anything like airband it doesn't do uh weather radio it doesn't do anything like that this is a shortwave radio and it is tiny in fact i'll 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 bring up well i don't want to spoil the secret yet because there's still some stuff hidden behind the uh, slides that you guys can't see that um it's just cool. It, it's super cool. 222 euros is not cheap. So whomever you're maybe buying this for or buying it for yourself, it's uh, it's uh, it's like you got to be like a loved, you know, loved one, really important friend that's definitely into this kind of stuff. Because it, it, when I made the video, I immediately thought like, oh, man, this is a spy radio. Could you imagine? Could, like I did a video on Cold War radios and, and what people spies like uh, – in Germany, behind the wall, that kind of stuff, and and all the clandestine radio work that they had to do, like how they would smuggle in parts to build a radio, and all these tiny little radios that they'd use for doing number stations or receiving number stations was more of the thing they were doing. Could you imagine if you had something like this <laughs> and you were you were doing those kind of radio operations? That's wonderful. I think it's so cool. And there's a size comparison. There's a compass right next to it incredibly tiny super cool 
Uh, KM6QXE. So good question. I don't have the Malahit. The Malahit is much bigger, though, in comparison to the Belka. The Belka is simple. It's a stripped down, high speed, low drag, little baby radio. It's super, super tiny. So it's it's got that cool factor going on for it. The Mala Heat, though, is a, it's got the Spectrum display on it, and that's really cool looking as well. So it, it's really, because I don't have a Mala Heat, I can't add it to this list, but the Mala Heat looks cool. I would definitely check it out if I had one, but I don't know how many shortwave receivers I actually need. I definitely have more radios than hands at this point, and I generally like the ones that transmit a little bit more, but having shortwave receivers are always really good. Uh, <laughs> Andrew H. Andrew H. I got to go back for this. Andrew H. asks, "Did it help? Does it help to shoot an azimuth? No, <laughs> no, it doesn't. Unless I guess you have a directional antenna and you're trying to triangulate the station that it's coming from. All right. Uh, and I bought it. I bought it. <laughs> the Lenovo Tab Eight Android Tablet, ninety nine dollars. You can find it at Walmart. You can find it on Amazon. They're available all over the place. The only downside of this, I mention it up front just because people do get pissed off about things like this. It is micro USB. It's not USB-C, which is horrible because there is a on O N N like seven inch tablet that that Walmart sells for like 60 bucks. And that thing is USB-C, but that thing is hot garbage. Do not buy that uh, tablet. Please don't buy that tablet. The Lenovo Tab 8, though, is a very good Android tablet for the price. It is the cheapest usable and my level of incredul incredulity that I get when an Android tablet is sluggish is probably higher than most people. I hate really sluggish Android devices, and this is good enough for the price that I don't get mad. It It's 99 bucks. It works really well. I don't have any issues with it. Quite happy with it. And it does all the things that you see there. So it'll connect to an SDR. It'll connect to a Nano VNA. It'll connect to a Mobi-linked TNC. It'll connect to that launch ON, uh, ONLH radio for doing APRS. Or the Mobi link will give you APRS capability through the Kenwood. It'll connect to the PO kit for using it as a simplified oscilloscope and also a multimeter. It's good. It 99 bucks is probably the best you can do for a tablet, from my point of view. So that's why I mention it. Daryl Hall or Daryl Grant asks, is there a computer program that automatically scans ham shortwaves instead of doing it manually? Yeah, you go buy a scanner. <laughs> go buy a scanner or go check out um go check out Kiwi SDR and pull up the spectrum display and and make it on the band you want to look at and then look at the traffic and then you can just click on it. Make it visual. You don't need to hear it all. All right, Daryl, I got it. Don't spam the chat, bud. And this is a chat about gear, not about scanners. Cuz I I actually bought a scanner last year and I didn't review it. I'm going to have to do that. I'll have to get on it. Mm. And I bought it. Okay, moving on. The MicroTik, basically MicroTik equipment in general. The two that I'm going to mention, though, are the HAP access point, which is that thing that looks like kind of a hub. It actually looks like a really dumb, stupid hub, like the ones you used to get way back in the day. It is not, though. It has a PoE out, so power over Ethernet out on the right-hand side, and it is also reflashable and usable for Arden. So you can connect Arden equipment, and it will mesh with Arden equipment when connected over Ethernet. And it also has Wi-Fi built into it, which is just insane. So what I can do with this, and I, I did this in a video. You can go back and look. My dish setup, which is the, you know, the pictures on the left and the right. I'm holding it next to my head. I have those connected over power over Ethernet. The HAP device is powering the dish, and the dish is also meshed with the HAP once it gets up and connected. But the great news about that is my laptop, my phone, whatever, when I'm on the Wi-Fi that the HAP is putting out, it will connect me if I want to to that dish. So I can go to all the Arden devices that that dish can see connecting to the repeater that's some 45 miles away from my home, all in one simple, simple package. It's a really, really cool 
uh, de- it's it's a really cool design, a really cool system, and it's like two devices in one. It's like 160 bucks for the whole thing. So really cool projects. Again, some of you might have wanted to like uh, drop these into wish lists or whatever. Drop this stuff into wish lists. People will send. Hopefully, hopefully people will buy this for you. And then you could spend like two months just dinking around with this stuff. The hap, the dish setup. Really cool. Microtik is making some good stuff. Ubiquity used to be kind of like the mainstay for a lot of Arden equipment, but the Microtik stuff has come a long way, and it's it's really good. I, I really had fun um, playing with that. In fact, I, I still do because I get on there every once in a while, and I, I have more work I need to do. There's an update video that needs to be done, and, uh, yeah, we'll talk more about that in the future. Oh, and I bought it. <laughs> I bought all that stuff. All right. This one might be a little controversial. Um, I really like the ICOM AA, AH705 tuner. When the 705 came out, there were a lot of tuners that people were co-opting to use with the 705. And they were fine. They, you know, they, they worked okay. They were fine. I have found in my testing, which if you wanted to see this in use, you could watch my helium balloon video with floral wire that I bought all this stuff, or not the balloons, but I bought a lot of this stuff when I was at the Dollar Tree, and it was the ICOM tuner that that really made this all work. The reasons why I like this tuner is it's you know 1.8 to 50 megahertz. It's AA powered, okay? AA powered batteries versus 9 volt in an external tuner. Big thumbs up for me. It's one less thing that I have to mess with. I have a ton of rechargeable AA's. That's why I like it. It's IPv54 rated. So the the design of this is that it's kind of designed to go and connect to the feed point of the antenna or be the feed point of the antenna. You can actually see it in the picture there, and I'll show it later uh, if we have some time at the end of the show, that you have that little red nubbin. Um, that's for you to put the wire in for just a random length of wire antenna. This is designed to be by the feed point of whatever it is you're putting up, which is really, really nice, and it reduces the losses you get if you're going to run a tuner. The best thing you can do is not run a tuner. I appreciate that. I'm pretty much a resonant guy, but when I do my Will It Antenna videos, inevitably when I grab or reach for a tuner, this is now the one I'm reaching for because it makes things a lot easier. It separates the radio, it separates the radio from the tuner, which I'm a big fan of, I know a lot of uh, QRP radios have internal tuners, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I generally like to keep those things separated from each other as best I can. Not cheap. $359 is not cheap. But uh, I definitely bought it. I definitely use it. And I do like it. All right. The Wushun KGUV9D. I think this was a live stream. We did a review of this live. I still like this radio. I, I think it's a it's a really good radio for the price. It's one hundred and ninety dollars. I think some of you probably remember me saying we're in a place where we don't have enough of those middle tier radios. There's a lot of people that are really strongly advocating for the sub one hundred dollar and uh, radios, and that's fine. Um, but at some point, I think most hams will will start to get kind of bored by them, or they'll they'll not. They'll not grant access to the much more interesting things I find um, that are out there for VHS, UHF, etc. And the the next step up, if you want to get to APRS, etc., you're looking at like four hundred dollars, right? In the case of like the FT5DR. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned it. It's on sale right now. If you want it, it's like four hundred bucks. That's seventy five dollars less than what I paid for it. So this is just a good middle of the road radio. And um, by the way, for everybody that's wondering, the KGUV9D, this is the Mate, KGUV9D Mate model. Wushin has a variety of KGUV something radios that put out 7-ish watts. They're all pretty much the same. The only difference of them is their colorways. They'll, They'll be black or they'll be orange in this case. They have subtle differences, but they're all kind of the same. Wushin has a problem with, um, they have a naming convention and they're sticking to it very seriously. And the radios aren't that different. So people get like analysis paralysis on which one to get. You can find this on Amazon, KGUV90 Mate. The link is in the description. It's an affiliate link. So again, if you buy something from me, I appreciate it. You don't have to. You can just look it up on your own. 
this is fine. This this will do everything you want to do. When we did the review for this, I equated this to a Yesu um, F. T60. This really reminded me of my first ham radio, which was the FT60. Just a lot of things about it. It felt like the, the current day FT60. The radio, the, the middle of the road radio that, that everybody's looking for, or a lot of people are looking for anyway. This one to me is it, and that's why I put it at that point. Okay, so those were my non-sorted list of my favorite things from 2021. I've got two items, and then I've got an honorable mention, and let's just look at it, and then we'll take some questions. One of my most favorite things of the year was the Powerfilm Solar Lightsaber Max. Th this is, like, such a cool piece of kit. Um, the, the, more, the more I started using it, and, well, let me back up a bit. I bought, I bought this somewhat on a whim during the after chat. We were late into the after chat towards the beginning or like middle-ish of the year and we started talking about solar panels and how I wanted something that was that I could charge a Raspberry Pi or potentially my GPD Pocket 2 laptop off of and we started looking into it more and more and I just went to the point I'm like I'm just gonna buy it it's got a battery it's got a solar panel if it doesn't do the the laptop thing that's fine we can still do the Raspberry Pi thing etc cetera, etc cetera. I just bought it turns out it will charge both the 705 in its 12 volt output into into the 705 to give you that full 10 watts and also output the um, necessary voltage to charge the G GPD pocket 2 which is my little tiny laptop what a what a cool what a cool solar panel definitely not cheap <laughs> definitely definitely not cheap they're easy to pack. They fold up. It usually goes in the same pocket as my antenna mast, whatever that water bottle pocket is. They sit right next to each other, and they go right along with each other. Now I'm carrying an extra uh, bit of power cord, you know, twin twin power cord with power poles. Connect them together, boom, boom, into the into the lightsaber max, into the 705. I'm done. What a what a really cool what a cool piece of kit. It. it I don't know how else to sell it other than I do have a video coming up for it, but it's been in numerous of my videos and mentioned on live streams. So it definitely deserves the the the, the notch there for like the coolest piece of kit that I got um, for this year. A couple of points on that. It's a four to six amp hour battery, depending on how you calculate the value. Runs the 705 or most QRP radios all day. Um, you will pretty much have the charge battery at that point and then depending on i know for a fact them radio out, waves is harmful you know, you'll, you'll be in for um, whatever that is hey robert Fo uh, foglietta says found your channel a week ago love your mindset pass my technician test this morning general next keep the powder dry keep the fed in check i appreciate the super chat and i definitely like the numbers there you pick so appreciate you sir thank you so much for that it means a lot um, downside, I know this is supposed to be all the things that I really, really like and love, and I do. I really love this. Um, it's $400. It's not cheap. It is a cool, as far as like ham radio gear goes, you know, in the gun community, they've got the high speed, low drag, the cool operator operating operationally type guys. Um, this to me is like ham radio, high speed, low drag, super, super cool device, but it's $400. So, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and mention this now. Hold on. So I bought mine. Okay, I bought mine. And in fact, here, let me let me go over here. So here's a lot of the things that, that I, I really like. I bought that one. That one's in the middle. I paid cash for it earlier this year. Um, Gigaparts, though, they sent me one. So... I am going to give this away. Once I do my video, um, which I'm going to do the video regardless, but I'm going to give this away on my Christmas stream, which will be on Christmas Day. So that uh, Lightsaber Max I'll be giving away, and I'm actually also going to give away my... Um, I am going to give away my KGUV 9D. So it's been sitting for too long. It deserves a better home because I do have my FT60, which was my first ham radio, so I'm not going to give rid of that. 
uh, but I am going to be getting, giving rid of, giving this away, among many other things. So make sure you, if you got nothing to do with your Christmas Day evening, uh, make sure to come back to the channel, hit subscribe, because we will be giving away a ton of stuff. I have a bunch of first aid stuff that USN NER Doc sent to that I haven't uh, done the giveaways yet for. So we're going to save some of that for the Christmas stream as well. So uh, Power Film Solar, the KG UV90, couple of other things too that we're going to be giving away. So wanted to mention that because this one I totally bought. It's still one of my most favorite things of the year. But, you know, hey, I appreciate you guys. And um, so that's yeah, going to be cool. All right, next one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go follow me on TikTok, and you can see <laughs> see the video I made when I got the uh, the seventy six ten. I live in an incredibly noisy environment. RF noisy, not just random people screaming noisy. That rarely happens. It's just the RF noise. It's 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 noisier than you would expect. And so for me, it's not just the dual receivers or the many antenna inputs that the 7600 or the 7610 has it's that i can i can s sample between them or split the listening between them and i can go with a vertically polarized antenna if that has less noise than a horizontally polarized antenna right super super valuable for me the 7610 is that capability that i need if i want to use hf in the suburbs which is kind of my goal uh, so yeah, it, it it was a really big upgrade for me. The the dollar amount will may shock you when I flip the slide. Not a cheap radio, and definitely not entry level. I wouldn't call this entry level. So it's probably beyond me uh, in my capabilities. But I I absolutely love it. I'm having a blast getting to know it and learn it. The big old screen on it is is beautiful and spicy and and all and ham sexy. I'll go ahead and say definitely ham sexy. All right, so the diversity receive is one of the primary reasons I got it. In multiple receivers, or two receivers, and it has a, um, a receive-only input for antennas and then actually two discrete channels for transmit and receive. So you could hypothetically have multiple receiving antennas, which I have a receive loop on my roof, and then you could also technically have a vertical transmitter and a horizontally polarized when I say transmitter, antenna into the discrete uh, two channel um, on the on the radio. The split audio into the headphones is really nice. So when I'm if I'm doing uh, a contest or I'm doing a radio event, I can listen on the horizontal antenna on the left ear and the vertical on the right ear, which is kind of cool and handy. This is something that's probably more important to contesters or people who are a little bit more focused in that area. The screen is much larger than that of the 7300. It's fantastic. 7300 screen is still really good, but this, in, this screen is, is really, really nice. And you get more um, SDR controls. So it has DigiSelect, which kind of functions as a pre-selector, and the tracking that it does with two, the two different receivers on two different antennas is really, really handy. So in my case, you can see that the left channel is on two meter, or sorry, twenty meters, and the right channel, which has a separate, sep a different antenna connected to it, they're tracking each other. So as I'm scrolling the bands, both receivers are going together, so that if any one of those receivers pulls out the signal better, the audio will actually switch over both channels to that, which is really really handy. And I bought that. <laughs> so, um. I want to point out that that all the stuff, just so people, I don't want to get any comments that I'm like shilling or anything like that. Literally, almost everything I got was uh, something I bought. Most things I I review, I buy on this channel, just because I I don't want people to feel like they've been bamboozled and that there's shenanigans going on. So. That's why I mention it today. And I'll probably, you know, I always try to mention it because I think it's the important thing to do to be objective and honest when we're out here making reviews. But anyway, honorable mention. <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, this is going into the Christmas video uh, or the Christmas live stream. And there will be a video talking about this contraption of an antenna that I'm going to be building. I am uh, thankful that I've got <laughs> this antenna. 
And uh, there will be more about this. I'm not going to give much more away other than what you're seeing right now. But those are some ham radio memes uh, that, that are on that, that antenna base. Look familiar? Anybody? So, uh, very cool idea. Very cool idea, and we're gonna be we're gonna be talking about this. Um, we're gonna be talking about this in the future. So, I love I love the Abri Mini. I think that's my favorite meme. That's why I put that at prominence right there. Anyway, HF antenna very important, very important for the next week's show. And uh, yeah, yeah. So that's the honorable mention because I haven't I haven't done the video yet on this, but it's gonna be in the live stream that I do for Christmas where we do the giveaways because I'm expecting, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. So we're good with the slides. Um, I'll tell you what, I have a strong belief that I am going to go through this whole process of setting up this antenna, which is going to be a lot. Uh, I'm going to spend probably all day tomorrow on it. And I bet you I'm going to blow the bulbs on this thing like immediately. Ron Walensky. Yeah, so this is um I I'll just I'll I'll spill the beans a little bit. This is the and I don't know the exact name. Someone needs to um correctly answer this in the chat. This is basically the DX Commander base. Uh but in homage to the DX Commander, they put memes all around it and those are actually a part of the printing on it and it's a 3D printed base as well for separation between the the ra um the active elements and the radial plate at the bottom. So that's the it's the Memex commander. That's it. Thanks, Tank. Yeah, the Memex. No, the Memex Petty Officer. That was it, Justin. Thank you. God, I I, I knew I should have messaged you beforehand. I forgot. So that's called the Memex Petty Officer. I know for a fact them radio waves is harmful. Um, all right. Got a got a super chat from Patriot Emery or Patri Pat you pronounce that pat patrick patrick emery any good portable directional antenna recommendations for poda uh good recommendation so i have nothing i have nothing that i've laid hands on buddy pole has the buddy hex which is a literal portable hex beam so that that is a thing. Not cheap. Um, you hypothetically could be able to build what I'm building right now, and there will be more to come on that. And you could set that up for Poda, but th it might take a little while. It might be a little too long to set that bad boy up. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. The Buddy Hex. Go look up the Buddy Hex. Hard to get. There are definitely videos on it, though, so you, you'd probably be able to satisfy your, your questions there. All right, got a couple of minutes left here. What, let's take more questions if there are anybody or any. And then, um, if not, please join us over on the Discord. I'm happy to um, happy to take more questions over there. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're we're kind of wrapping up the year, so I'm trying to have more fun. Just take it light on the after chat. Get some newbie questions in there in the beginning, but then just chill out and have fun. Scout seventy five says, "Just wanted to hear the sounder." Here we go. I know for a fact them radio waves is harmful. Yeah, I, I do. People got mad when I when I put that up, but I really like it. I just <laughs> I heard them radio waves is harmful. <laughs> Favorite. All right, so everybody on the Discord, if you're trying to join, Derm Harris is saying I'm having Discord issues getting into the Discord channel. Um, so join. We do. We had to turn on like advanced screening, which is basically you have to give your cell phone number or your phone number we don't get it we don't want your number we don't want any of that it's just so you can do the two-party confirmation with the code they send you because we were getting uh spam botted that, that's why it exists we're not gonna we're not gonna uh we don't want your info i don't want your cell phone number i'm not trying to text you jamp scan did you go over that receiving loop um it did not make my list not because it's bad I'm just not completely satisfied with the setup of it. I'm working on... Man, that made me a little gassy, that beer. The snooze control made me a little gassy. Um, I, I've got some more to do with it to clean up some of the wiring, but it, it's definitely good. I just didn't... It didn't 
I couldn't necessarily get it on the list, so I apologize. Netflix canceled Cowboy Bebop. Yes. Thank you. I'm, I'm so glad they did that. Uh, Salt Pork 305 knows how to sucker me into answering a question. Anybody, if you sucker me into, if, if you ask me a question, what would be your elevator speech for? I'm totally a sucker for those questions. What would be my elevator uh, pitch for the FT5DR? The elevator pitch for the FT5DR is it's literally the peak of amateur radio handhelds on the market. It has feature sets like automatic position reporting system, or I'm sorry, packet reporting system that other radios don't do, which allows you to text message your friends and loved ones or email them as well as let them know geographically where you are at any time if you want to. It also supports a digital mode that is prominently used. It's one of three prominently used, and it's really, really good, as well as being IP7 rated for submersible capabilities. There's my... I didn't plan this. There's my answer. How's that? All right. Let's see. Uh... RF Field, hey, RF Field Tech, what's up, man? Love your pods and live streams. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Noah Burton, do you have to cut the Pactena mini wire to make it resonant on 20 meters? Yes, you do. Noah, go watch my uh, video on that. Please do. Please do. Please do exactly that. Um, you will, you, you definitely need to cut it and you, you need to use your SWR meter on your radio to get it into space. I highly recommend for that first cut for, you know, the, to get it into the, into the space that you use an antenna analyzer. Nobody in particular asks HRCC suggestions for non-invasive HF antenna for rental with no trees. Asked above with more details. Try not to spam one. No, nobody in particular. Feel free to join us on the Discord so I can go in longer form because I have more questions probably back to you like what is your budget? Is this a permanent setup? Is this a temporary setup? Temporary means you have more options, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you got to you got to potentially join us over on the uh, the Discord I do have more answers, but that's difficult. All right, we're uh, we're crossing over the six o'clock boundary here. Yeah, forget your life. I was I was pretty close. He ships it with forty feet or close to forty feet of wire, and uh, George messaged me and said you can pretty much just cut it down to thirty three feet and then just start trimming lightly trim lightly trim until you get it. Now the good news with this antenna is it's fairly forgiving. The bandwidth of it is huge it covers the entire 20 meter band and is incredibly low so you you're you're generally pretty good for the whole band uh dusty good question best inexpensive way to get to ft8 Again, so everybody, and this is going to help out every YouTuber and everybody you ever, ever talk to on the internet or ask a question, you got to give them budget. Inexpensive for you is not the same thing as inexpensive for me. And I'm looking at it as inexpensive HF radios that will do FT8 on the market. The most inexpensive is that, that I would actually tell people go look at is the Shegu G90. You can do FT8 with the Shegu G90. It's 450 some dollars. And then you'll have to pair it with, a, not pair it, but pair it with a Raspberry Pi or some kind of laptop that you connect to. And then you can definitely do um, FT8. And 20 watts is pretty good for FT8. You'd be, you'd be all right with that. All right. Okay, good. All right, guys, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up and go over to the Discord. So follow along over there. I will be live streaming on Twitch for the after chat. So if you don't want to join the after chat and you just want to hear the questions that come up or ask a question over Twitch, I'll also answer your questions over on Twitch. The chat will be live there as well. I'm Ham Radio Crash Course on Twitch too. All right. Okay. Let's say a big thank you to the patrons. Um, just a note for everybody, Patreon is the kind of support mechanism that allows me to 
to buy the things and review the things that we did today. More often than not, though, it goes into the services that I pay for for podcasting, hosting, and live streaming because it's not just free, particularly on the YouTube side. There are actual things you need to pay for for all the different stuff I'm using, like cameras and microphones and all the other stuff. So I definitely appreciate the support. All these people are amazing. There is multiple tiers, but at the $2 level, you get access to the newsletter that I put out every month. And um, you can message me directly if you have more specific long, long form questions and you don't want to do it over Discord or whatever. And because you're on Patreon, I answer, answer you immediately or as fast as I can. So definitely thank you to all these guys. And a reminder, it is always the first episode of the month, which was last week, which we do patron picks, which is a topic voted on by the patrons. So appreciate it. Everybody in the chat, we had, I had a really fun time making this. Uh, hopefully this was enjoyable. I know sometimes me just recapping the stuff that I liked is dumb um, a bit, but I hope this was cool. <laughs> I hope everybody liked it. Uh, so thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Yeah, and please consider joining us over on um, over on the Discord. That would be great. I'm really glad to see more people like coming out to the live streams. I hope that um, – I think what happens is people, when it starts to get cold – People start thinking about, you know, a project that they might do in the winter or start learning about over the winter and then emerge from their snow covered cocoon in the spring and uh, and enjoy. So maybe that's ham radio for you. And if you're watching this, I hope you do join our community of amazingly cool people. We definitely want more hams. The more hams we have, the stronger we are and um, and more people to make contacts with, because at the end of the day, that's what this is all about is meeting people and spreading the love and enthusiasm of RF wireless technologies. So that's that's why we do it. That's why we're out here. It's super lot of fun. And I hope you uh, hope you join us. Okay. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. I will talk to you hopefully on the Discord, but if not then, next week I'll p drop a video and then following Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I'll be live again. I'll play you out with some memes. For those of you that missed the memes in the beginning, there's some new spicy ones. Thanks for watching, 73. Hey, Richard, if you're still listening, the link is in the description. Richard F. That happened to me. Somebody called the cops when I was in a park. Go look up my MFJ cobweb antenna if you want to see cops get called on me for playing ham radio in a park. Yep, it's a thing.
All right, everybody. Catch you on the Discord. See ya.